on this episode, math, throat singing. Uh, 40... Whale singing. Ooh! Ooh! And the camera falls asleep. Hello, camera? Hi everybody, this is Christian from Lazy Devs. Welcome to our advanced schmuck tutorial. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. So in the last episode, we um, talked about explosions, something that's very, very important to me. And we did a thing. We did this little blob that we can change the size of. And we kind of stopped at an awkward moment because I was just like showing you some of the, like this setup here where kind of like I'm fine tuning the amount of circles we're drawing and which colors are we deleting and so forth. But also said that we're gonna do some major changes. And the major changes will involve the way we are using colors right now. The colors right now are kind of like placeholder. Um, it's actually not good to have this many colors in a single blob because it's gonna be a nightmare to animate them. And um, they look pretty. And we're gonna have those colors in explosions, just not at all at the same time in the same blob, you know? Although, I always have to say that whatever I'm doing here is just what I'm doing here. You're free to do your own explosions. And if you think that this is a, would be a cool explosion, go ahead and knock yourself out, it's, it's fine. My approach to things doesn't have to be always the right one. It's just what I chose in this specific uh, situation. And this will apply to many, many, things that we're gonna do throughout this tutorial. It's just what I did. That doesn't mean that all of the games have to look and feel the same. And that's something that's very important. That's why I look at all those examples from different enemies. There is just, there's no one way to do an explosion. There is just like all the different peoples experimenting with similar ideas, using some kind of blobs, but sometimes it looks like this, sometimes it looks like this, sometimes it's this, sometimes it's that. You know, it depends on what your taste is what kind of person you are, what you like, what you don't like, and what is easier for you, what is more difficult to you know. There's all sorts of different reasons why you want to make an explosion like this, or like this, or like that, or any other part of the game, for that matter. But this is my explosion, and something I don't like, something that's causing me headaches, is to have to deal with a lot of colors for each particle. So I want to make my things a little bit simpler. Last time around, I've shown you this. This is a really nice function that was at some point added to Pico 8, which is called fill P. This sets up a fill pattern to a thing. So you can, instead of drawing with a solid color, you draw with a dithering pattern, dith dithering fill pattern. This is cool. And we're gonna use this to render our explosion instead of the different colors. All right, so here's a little demo to kind of like give you an idea what this looks like. We're just gonna do a fill P and we can actually, there's actually all the different, like, like this, for example, and that's it. And then we're gonna run this and you can see, ooh. Now some of the pixels that we're drawing on the circle are basic transparent. That's cool. Now something that's, that's also cool is that you can use different fill patterns and actually when you use the, so like this one was, um, let me see, it, I always try to like, for example, this one is shift Z. This will give you this pattern, right? So now you have like this kind of pattern. Shift B gives you that, that you know, that beautiful checkerboard pattern. That's cool, that's cool. Um, but you can also design your own pattern. That's also, that's very important. And the way this works is uh, you just put a number in here and those number results in patterns. And the patterns encoded in a number and that's kind of weird. So the way this works is, is you go 0B, that um, sets you up for a binary number. And then you go once, 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 and 0, 0, 0, and 1, 1, 1, and 0, 0, 0. And these zeros and ones get converted into a four times four um, fill pattern. So um, yeah, this is kind of like basically the first row of our, of our fill pattern. This is the second row of our first fill pattern, third row and fourth row. And those ones and zeros get translated into pixel on, pixel off. Yeah, and so for example, if you get one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, you get like alternating pixels, right? Something like this. 
Um, basically, those ones and zeros get translated into pattern of pixels. Now, you might have noticed something weird, like these are black pixels. It alternates between the pixels that we're drawing and black pixels. But previously, <coughs> previously, what we had is like this, Shift-B, right? Previously, what we had was like transparent pixels, like we saw the blue of the background shine through. And that is something that uh, you can do. Oh, anyway. so that's uh, something that you can do uh, that's controlled by. Uh, and that is really weird because this is a binary number and the binary number has like digits behind the comma. So you can do comma one after, at the end of the binary number. And that gives you the transparent bit. So if it's not comma one, if it's just like a integer binary number, then you get um, the turned off pixels are, are just black. But if you get comma one at the end, the turned off pixels are gonna be transparent. So it's gonna be see-through. This is not exactly true, however. This is not exactly true. If you don't have the comma one at the end, those black pixels, they don't have to be black you can actually alternate between two different colors. And the way this works is a bit weird. And I think most people are not really aware of this. Most people just like go comma one because you can just like go comma one and just draw, draw two circles on top of each other, one filled circle and one with transparent pixels. And then you get your dithering pattern between two colors. So you can just like replicate that kind of like two color dithering pattern using just transparent pixels. But now we just want to, we really want to harness all of the abilities of PQ8. So we have to understand how dithering between two colors works. Let me, let me show you real quick. Let me, let me eliminate the four next loop. So we just, I just want to draw a circle, a, a circle of a certain size. So we're going to draw it in the center, 64, 64. And the radius is going to be 12, whatever. And now I want to control the color. So the color is going to be 10. Let's go 10 for now. Right, so now we have yellow and black. These, this is the pattern that we have right now. The way this works is you can actually have two colors. You can encode two colors in the color that you're drawing. This 10 corresponds to this yellow, but it also secretly encodes a second color it secretly encodes a second color. That color in this case is the color black. But you can have a yellow that encodes also a secondary color that is different. You have to use a number that is greater than 16. Because you know, if you, or greater than 15, the final color is 15, right? The final color is here, 15. And then when you use next color, 16, that's gonna be black again, right? Usually. It's black again, right? So if we're gonna go, now this is black, right? So 16 is the same thing as zero. It's the same thing as 32. <clears throat> it's the same thing as 64. The 16 colors just always loop through. So 10 plus 16 is yellow, right? 10 is yellow, 10 plus 16 is yellow, 10 plus 32 is yellow. It always cycles through, it always loops through. So when we use a bigger color than, uh, a bigger number than 16, it will just loop through the colors that we already had. And it seems like we're just getting the same colors over and over again, but in fact, we're not. In fact, there's a second color kind of encoded in the 32 that we're adding here. <clears throat> so, Basically, the way this works is you the primary color cycles through, but once you get to 16, the secondary color ticks up. When we're talking about colors from 0 to 15, the primary color is going to be the color from 0 to 15, and the secondary color is going to be 0. Now, once we loop through, once we start at the 16 to uh, 31 range. The primary color is gonna be you know, 0 to 15, depending on what, what's happening. The secondary color would be then one. And then once we get to 32 to uh, 40, 
7. Um, the primary color is going to be again 16, uh, 0 to 16, but the secondary color counts up to 2. And the secondary color is kind of like what the turned off pixel will turn to. So that's why, that's why when we turn on the pattern, when we have 10, the, now the uh, turned off pixels are black, but if we add 32, now the turned off pixels are um, dark red. The formula to kind of like calculate the color that encodes both colors is something like this. Color one plus color two multiplied by 16. That's the formula. Color one plus color two multiplied by 16. And you know, color two multiplied by 16, I like this is because this is, this is executed first, right? So um, let's just like think about what we want, what would happen if we want to have these two colors, right? If we want to have like color 10 and color nine encoded together. Well, it's gonna be color, let's go say color 10 is the primary color. That's gonna be 10 plus, and now let's say the orange color is supposed to be secondary color. That's gonna be nine multiplied by 16. What is that? That's, that is, uh, that's 144 plus 10, so 154, 154. We're going to plug this into our stroke full function here. And now you can see we're alternating between the yellow color and an orange between those two colors. We're alternating between those two colors. And that's neat. That's kind of nice, isn't it? Because it kind of like means that when we want to change the color of our explosion, we want to change the color of our particle, we just want to change one number. That's nice. We don't have to change four numbers. That's cool because that means, for example, when we can we can set up an array, for example, of colors that we that a particle should cycle through, and it's just going to be a sequence of numbers. Because otherwise, we, what we would have to do is when we animate four colors, we'd have to create like four arrays to animate through. It's just like so much information to animate the the, uh, the particle. But if we can encode two colors in one number in a way that's kind of like native to Pico 8, that's kind of like really, really convenient. And so that's something that I want to go for. Now, something that we haven't discussed now is exactly how those ones and zeros um, convert into a, a actual fill pattern. There's a lot of tools out there. You can search, just Google, um, uh, you know, Pico 8 fill P tool. Um, this one is on, um, on uh, itch, but I saw some on the like uh, made with Pico 8 in the in the Lexilovel forums as well. So this is a tool where you can just draw a fill pattern. On the right, you see there the kind of like the repeated pattern, and then you can turn on and off individual pixels. You can even set to two different colors, right? You can set two different colors, and here it gives you that that color that that where that encodes both colors. It gives, it spits out that color. It also spits out the binary number that you just that results that is this pattern. So if I want to have like this pattern, for example, let's say I want to have this pattern like this, whatever, something like this, then that's going to be this binary number. Uh, and you know, if it's supposed to look exactly, let's say it's supposed to be exactly like this. Oh my gosh! Then that's going to be color two hundred three. That will result in this fill pattern uh, using this binary sum. Um, you can also use, I think, this number as the decimal sum. This is basically, yeah, you can just plug in this number as well. But I think when we're talking about um, fill patterns, I think these ones and zeros are a bit more intuitive because the ones represent the pixels, you know. You can kind of tell how, how the zeros and ones translate into, into individual. You can see how when I turn on and off an individual pixel, you can see how the one changes over there, right? There's a one changing from zero to one because the individual digits correspond to individual pixels. Okay, so you can use this tool to generate, to design your own patterns. Something that's kind of nice as well is that we basically always have to draw just like with one our one color. And let, let, let me show you. So instead of now, instead of drawing from this color array, that color array is gone. Donezo. No, sir, we don't want you anymore. We just, we're just going to draw with our 154 color. Let's run this. Cool. That's this fill pattern here. Then we're just going to create a new array here. 
I'm going to call it pad. <clears throat> and this area will be just having fill, different fill patterns. We can get this fill pattern out, out there. Let's say we want to have this fill pattern. Let's say, start with fill pattern zero. And then let's end with fill pattern zero B, uh, zero B, one, 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 one. That's actually, this is one, zero, too much. One, two, three. Yeah, 16 ones after each other. And then let's make, we can also do something like this in here. Like you can, we can, you can put whatever you want into this array basically, right? Let's just like do something like this. And then before we draw the, the circle, we're gonna go do a fill pattern I, right? We're gonna grab a pattern from our pattern array. And we're gonna draw the circle using this fill pattern and just using always the same color combination, always the same two colors. But the shading of the circle would change depending on which pattern, fill pattern we're using. Let's run this again. Ooh, ooh, that's nice. And something I want you to pay attention to is, especially this, let's change it to just two. You see how we can change the color of the circle. We can just fill the circle with a single color using just the patterns. We just, we're using the same, we, we have two circles for two different colors, right? But we're always filling in with the same color. We're just changing up the patterns. And that's kind of like neat. So for example, here is, is like when the fill pattern is zero, then the circle is, is all yellow. And when the fill pattern is 16 ones after each other, zero B and then 16 ones. And it's, it's a, it's, it's, I think it's minus one. Isn't it minus one? Yeah, it's minus one. It converts to just minus one. <clears throat> so it's, if it's 16 ones after each other, then that circle is gonna be orange. It's gonna basically be a secondary color, I think. So we can just like do our, we can first draw the 16 ones, and at the end we're gonna draw zero, and everything in between there, those two mid uh, patterns are gonna be some kind of, some kind of dithering pattern, right? Right, so let's bring in some fill patterns. I did some experiments. I did some, some drawing in that tool myself. I kind of like tried to find out a cool fill pattern. Here's something that's kind of nice. Uh, this is a pattern I call high noise. High noise. Like this. And this is a pattern I call sparse dots. It's just like a one. <laughs> it's just like a single, single. See? Now something is wrong here at the end here. Oh, it should be zero. Isn't that nice? Isn't that really nice? So you can see now, if I make it really big, you can see. So in the, in the middle, in the middle circle is just all yellow. Then we have the second circle um, uh, on the outside that is have like this very, very sparse dots. Then we have a like more of a dense chaotic fill pattern. And on the very outside, we have just a solid uh, orange. Hello, camera. Right, so the middle circles, we are gonna fill those with, with, with kind of these patterns. Now, if we're gonna, if the circle gets smaller, we're gonna have to do some manipulation here. This, this looks really nice. This looks like, this looks like proper explosion, right? This is still okay. Now, now this is bad. This is bad because you have the sparse dot pattern in the center. This, the middle should be always like the smallest circles. And this is just like, what, what's happening here? So we have to do some tweaking on the patterns here, but so far everything is cool. So with eight conveniently here, now is where we're gonna start ha have to manipulate things. And the reason why this doesn't work is because we are manipulating this color array, but now we want to actually manipulate the, the pattern array. All right, so when we turn into eight, we I want to remove the, the sparse dot pattern. So uh, here we're gonna go del E pat. Now the sparse dot pattern is here, that's number three. So we're gonna remove this when we get to eight. Okay, so um, now when we get to six, we also want to remove this because yeah, 
And here is where we just want to remove uh, three and two. Yeah, because here we actually in the when when we get to five or smaller, so this size. Oh, actually that, that didn't work. Ooh, baby, that did work. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, just go like this. See, because we are right at five, it's just two circles. It's just like solid yellow and solid orange. So we are kind of like just drawing the empty and and full pattern. Like we're just drawing. Just this pattern and this pattern. We eliminate the middle ones. So that's what we're doing here. We're just removing the second entry twice in a row. But I also don't like this. I don't like this pattern. I, I feel like this this could could be a bit better. Like this this is this chaotic fill pattern that really works really well. I think here and when you have like such a big explosion, like now the the chaotic fill pattern looks really nice. But if uh, the explosion is really small, it kind of just just looks a bit like just janky. So I wanted to maybe do more of a um, more of a regular pattern there. I want to change up the patterns when uh, explosion gets really small, the blob gets small. And again, this is one another one of those things where you kind of have to experiment yourself, where you just have to think, look at things that work and don't work. This is this. There is no you know patent solution to this. But yeah, uh, basically what I want to do here is I want to change pattern number to the middle pattern. I want to change to this. This is a new type of pattern and I wanted to do it with six and eight. Uh, this is a new type of pattern which is, it's just stripes basically. Uh, we can maybe show it what it looks like. Just put it in here. Yeah, it's just stripes. Like now it's in the, in the center. It's just stripes, right? And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna tr use the stripes as the middle pattern. For the shading, and you want to see what happens. Now you can see that you have like these kinds of like stripes, and it looks a bit more regular. But I think it looks. Uh, I mean, it's just like for a seven and eight, but it's uh, and yeah, it's just for six, seven, and eight. Uh, but I think it looks kind of nice. It looks a little bit more like the, um, the edges of the Akira explosion that we saw in the previous episode. You know, you had like just like a blob, and all the edges you had like just a bit of a smoke shading, like smoke trails, vertical smoke trails. And I think this looks a little bit more like this. Um, so that's why I, I kind of change up the, the fill pattern when we get to the 8, 7, uh, and 6. But again, it's kind of like very subjective and, and it's very kind of like taste um, based. So you do you. You do whatever you think looks good. And then once we get to the 5, we're just drawing two circles now because, you know, it's just, it's just fine. Okay, now let's do a little bit of cleanup here because this is a bit of a chaos here. I, I have to admit, this is... Not my best code here, and this is just like this little fix if statement is just 57 tokens, just all just fine tune our explosions. I think I think we can do a little bit better. I think we can do better. And something, for example, you can do here is just this is these two um, Del I statements are, are eight tokens. Those Del I statements are quite expensive. Something we can do here is we can just replace the pattern uh, with uh, this and this. Instead of deleting them, so instead of eight tokens, we have five tokens, right? These two Del I statements are eight tokens, but just like redefining what the patterns is, is down to five tokens. That's, I think, a bit more efficient. And just to make sure that it works, yeah, it works. Okay, so that's maybe something that we can do here. Um, can we do something, the same thing here? No, we can't quite do it because we'd have to repeat this, I think, and that won't. So yeah, we're gonna keep the, maybe this thing around. Uh, but maybe we could combine the minus six and minus eight because they're basically the same stuff. It's just uh, we're de removing a different um, THK value. In one case, removing the four, and in other case, we're remo removing the three. So maybe we can combine them. Uh, I actually never done this, so let, let's see if this works. So I'm just going to remove this here, and I'm going to do as a ternary array here. So three and my R equals smaller equals six or four. Uh, oh, no, and then we have to go, go eight here like this. Yeah, good, good, good. So yeah, um, for everything below eight, we are um, 
deleting one pattern, we are replacing the middle pattern with this, and then we're de deleting a different thickness of the circle uh, because it's just like you look better. And this looks fairly consistent now. This looks very consistent now. This looks like the same blob at different sizes, basically. It just looks weird at two and one. It just looks... I have to apologize, my camera today is is not seeing me anymore. It's just like I don't I don't exist. Maybe it's a bit too dark. But anyway, yeah, so there is a bit of a one last issue and that is kind of like when the size of the pixel gets like of the blob gets really really small then we kind of like get into like the we have to deal with the number two and number one. These are like kind of special situation kind of things. When the blob gets really small it kind of look, looks a bit weird. Um, so especially at the size one and the zero for sure, but one and two, like these are kind of like special case situations where I would we said that previously, like drawing circles doesn't even really make sense anymore, right? Um, so something we can maybe do here is we're gonna go um, else if so we're gonna go if my r is smaller than two, and then else if. So in these kind of situations, we are kind of like really just like down to just drawing the background pattern and drawing the, yeah, drawing this, like we're just drawing a single circle. And then after we've drawn the circle, we're going to go at something like, if this is smaller than one, then else if, or if this is actually one, then else if my r equals two, then. So yeah, when the radius is one, we just basically, like if you look at this, it's just like, it's just a single pixel. We can just do a p-set uh, in the center as a single pixel. Why not, right? Like something like this. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh yeah, 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 because it's 154. So let's go 10. Oh no, it doesn't work like this. Huh? Oh, I understand why. I understand why. Um, let's do a fill pat. Let's re reset the film pattern. That's important. Okay, so now we have like a single pixel, and that's kind of like seems okay. That's that's fine. That's fine. And then for uh, when the when the size is two, that's kind of like this thing here. That's kind of like more of a square. And then again, it's kind of like we have to do like a fine tuning here. We're gonna do like an exception here, and that costs a lot of tokens. And we're gonna have to think about whether it's worth it or not. Um, if we ever feel like we need a lot of tokens, uh, a bunch of tokens, this is gonna be just free tokens. So why not just take them, right? Um, but for now, I want to kind of like have to. I want to make the game look as good as as as, as it's possible. Um, this is almost good. Um, this is gonna be minus two here. Maybe here is gonna be minus uh, just like this. Yeah. See, going from three to two looks natural now. This looks natural. It didn't look so great before when you had just had the cross in the center, but now it looks good. The piece that maybe, maybe instead of the piece that we're gonna do a line. How about a line? Um, between um, minus one on the y. So we're like from the center of the circle, we're gonna go one pixel up and we draw the line down to the center of the, of the circle. So something like this. Yeah, that looks maybe a bit better. So we still have like a bit of a shading happening here. Okay. So this is our little blob animation. This is this is the, all the fine tuning of our blob animation. And we're gonna mark some of parts of this blob animation with a star. So this is always something I do, like a um, comment with a star, shift S, it gives you the star. That's something I do to kind of like indicate situations where we can get, um, here's where we can get some uh, tokens out. We can remove this and it will look a bit uglier but uh, we're gonna get 40 tokens for, for this, right? And probably we can also simplify all of this as well, right? This is something also that we can simplify here as well. Okay, so before I go insane, we have to go to the doggy zone because this camera is just driving me nuts today. Let's go to the doggy zone. <laughs>
Right, so the, today's doggy zone is basically going to be a repetition of one of the tasks from the last doggy zone. In the last doggy zone, the task was kind of like to take this blob now, this blob thing that we did, created here, and turn this into um, an animation. Kind of like make it, like harness this to create an animation. So we already talked about, you know, the different phases of the animation. We already talked about, you know, how there's a short flash, a fireball, and a smoke. And I want you to create a system where you can take these things and replicate it using our blobs. So that's gonna be the goal for the doggy zone. So as always at the end of the show, this time with a bit of a blurry face, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to all of the people who are supporting this show on coffee. And if you also want to support this show on coffee, you can do so at coffee.com slash lazy devs. One of the perks is that you get to access new episodes earlier, which is really, really cool. And I also wanted to use this um, space to maybe talk a little bit about, uh, to answer maybe some questions. And now I that the episodes are actually being released on YouTube, I actually am getting some questions on the, in the episodes. On episode one, you Thunder asked, what about uh, what do you think about Tick80? I personally like the high resolution. Will you make someday a tutorial for Tick80? Um, I always planned to make a tutorial about Tick80. Uh, I never got to it somehow. There was never really a really good gap to make a tutorial about Tick80. And now we have Pikachu on the horizon. So I'm not really so certain if there's even going to be opportunity to make a tutorial about Tick80. But if there is an opportunity, I will certainly take it because that always looks like an interesting place to experiment in as well. Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen. So keep those questions coming and support me on coffee.com if you can. So now we are done with the blobs. We are now moving on to the place, to the main uh, event of the explosion challenge. We're gonna take those atoms, explosion atoms, those blobs, and we're gonna assemble them into a complete explosion. But that's something that comes on the next episode. See you next time around, guys, bye-bye.